back to the program. We just talked to Rick Essenberg. He is asking to intervene on behalf of his client, Christy Koschke, who's been on this program before. She's a teacher. She's been part of much of the Act 10 litigation. Um, and I, before I moved on to some other right-to-work issues that are affecting Wisconsin here and, indeed, other states, um, I have Mark Mix from National Right to Work Foundation um, on the program. And, Mark, you were with us in Wisconsin at the very beginning of Act 10, all throughout Act 10. Um, and so, you know, I have a, a question. How does J- the Janus decision, first we should probably walk people through that, how does that affect what they could do to Act 10 in Wisconsin? Well, Vicki, you know, Act 10 deals with state law as it relates to the conditions of employment for public sector uh, workers in your state. The Janus decision, which is a case we argued at the U.S. Supreme Court and won back in 2018, says that no government worker anywhere in America, including Wisconsin, even if they do repeal Act 10, can be compelled to pay dues or fees to a union in order as a condition of employment. And secondly, it said that before the state can withdraw any money from a paycheck, which is part of Act 10, if it gets struck down, then they, there will be due deduction mechanism put back in place, I'm sure, uh, before anyone can take money out of anybody's paycheck, there has to be a waiver of their First Amendment rights saying that they recognize that the, the union's going to take this money. It used to be an opt-out scheme where they would take it and you had to find a way to opt out. But So Janice will have some impact, but ultimately... You know, this is a case that's already survived a challenge in the Seventh Circuit, in the District Court, and the Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals, and has been found, you know, and been blessed by the legal system as being completely within the, the, the bounds of, of Wisconsin law. And so the fact that the Supreme Court's going to take another look, the state Supreme Court's going to take another look at it, probably, you know, once they get done in Dane County, which is not a favorable venue, and wasn't a favorable venue during this whole fight last time, um, they'll probably take it out of the appeals court, take it right to their court, and, and make a decision. But it's going to be really hard to write a decision striking it down uh, based on what's happened in the past. So what we've got to do is fight, and we've just uh, we've just signed up a couple of clients. We're going to be filing a brief in the case and asking for intervention on behalf of some public Good. employees up in Wisconsin. We were involved in the case in Act 10. We argued in the second, Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals to preserve Act 10 when it was being litigated back in, what was that, 2013, I think, right? Yeah, I think the first was in, two, I think the first case hit in 2012, then there was one in 2013. They just kept coming. There were four yeah. cases. There was four cases, one in state court, there were three in federal court, and and, uh, and every single case was decided in favor of the constitutionality yep. of the law. Yep. If they want to strike it down, they, they, they need to go to the legislature. Hopefully the Supreme Court real, realizes that. This is a, it's a legislative matter. It passed legislatively. And, you know, the, the legislature has control over what the uh, terms and conditions of employment would be for state employees. And so um, I think there's hope. I think it's a stretch. And, um and we just got to continue to fight and continue to litigate. And, and I think people like you have to continue to inform Wisconsinites what it means. I mean, even the people that were opposed to Act 10 back then, I did, what was it, Milwaukee Executive Committee finally said, my goodness, this made a real difference in our budget Indeed. in Milwaukee. That, yeah. Yes, when Tom Barrett was, he had $29 million he didn't have overnight. $29 yeah. million dollars in the first wave of savings of Act 10 for the city of Milwaukee. They've managed to, uh, they've managed to wreck that. They've managed to screw that up. Um, of course they have, yeah. I want to, but the unions never stop fighting, um, even though you pass good legislation. By the way, we should talk about Joe Biden and the Democrats want to impose a law that would eliminate uh, that would eliminate um, right-to-work laws across the United States. So everybody understands that. Um, We're going to talk about our right-to-work law in Wisconsin, but recognize the Democrats want to dynamite all right-to-work laws across the states and give the unions 100% control of the workforce. Um, But while we have our law, you keep having to fight for people to get out of their unions, Mark. So let's talk about Dr. Pepper. Um, that is uh, a case in Wisconsin um, that was curing Dr. Pepper. Where was this? I think Oshkosh, somewhere around Oshkosh. And yeah. you, you know, I mean, they make you climb a mountain just to follow, you know, just to, to so that you can have the protections under the law. So what happened to Dr. Pepper? Yeah, this is one of those good stories and a story that is happening more often, Vicki. This is a, kind of a product line that we have at the foundation helping employees navigate the National Labor Relations Act to, in order to decertify a union. The idea is when you certify a union, you bring it in. When you try to get it out, you decertify it. And believe me, it's a lot easier to get into a union than it is to get out. 
And so the decertification process is a really comp well, it's complicated because it's in federal law and most folks don't understand. And when they start reading like triple negatives and things like that, it gets kind of confusing. So we've been helping a large and a growing number of employees to decertify unions. And this particular victory up in Oshkosh on behalf of uh, Dr. Pepper and Keurig drivers and, and folks that work there in three different units across the state, they came to us asking for help in a decertification move. We helped them fo fo follow the process to do it, get the petition filed, and they had a vote, and they decertified the Teamsters unions at three of these, uh, at three of these operations in the state. This is a 76-member unit. Um, and the, there was an overwhelming vote, about 60% voted to get out of the union. So the union has to walk away now. And this is how, unfortunately, you know, you've got to go through litigation to get out. You don't have to go through a, a whole lot of litigation to get in, but you got to go through a whole lot to get out. And as I mentioned, we're going to have a growing number of these cases across the country. And, and it's exciting to see employees standing up and saying, you know what, we don't like this anymore. We don't want it anymore. And we're willing and able and, and been successful in helping lots of employees use this decertification process so, to throw a union out of their workplace. You definitely want to have the legal assistance of National Right to Work to do this. You definitely, you guys provide this service to people. Um, you don't charge for the service to people. You just help these people. Um, but the, the Biden administration looking for backdoor card checks. So um, that's another thing that's coming on the other side of this is, you know, you've worked so hard to decertify the union now you're free and now you've got Biden wanting to let those same guys go back in and, and basically shake people down and get what amounts to a backdoor card check so that union comes right back in yeah they have to wait 12 months uh, the uh, so-called certification bar which is the only bar that's in the statute there are several bars that block employees from getting out that are non-statutory but the cert certification bar says you got to wait another 12 months before you get in but Vicki the secret ballot election is already gone uh, this case that uh, the NLRB ruled on in August of last year called CEMEX is a case where they basically said there's no secret ballot elections are no longer a thing. It's all card check. In fact, it can it doesn't have to be card check anymore. A union official walks into your place of business and says, hey, we got a majority of your workers, and the employer says, show me proof. And they say, you know what, I don't have to, but you've committed an unfair labor practice charge, and so we're going to go to the NLRB. And under this, this new CEMEX precedent that they established in August of last year, if they find there's an unfair labor practice charge during this process, they can impose a bargaining order on a company. Impose it. And so secret ballot's gone. This is what the Biden administration, when he said he's the, he's the uh, number one union president in American history, he doesn't mean that on behalf of rank and files because the rank and file workers are not getting any benefit from Joe Biden's work. But the union officials are for certain. So think about that. You can just a allege a work violation and boom. While, is that while it's being investigated or must, it be, must you be able to prove a workforce viola workplace violation? It remains to be seen. We, we have a case where there was a we were had a decertification, and uh, the the regional director blocked it, saying that he thought there was there was there was unfair labor practice charges allegations that hadn't been adjudicated yet, hadn't even been settled. And he said, well, because there's ULPs pending, we need to send this back to the board for a bargaining order, perhaps a bargaining order or wow. a, a decertification election. Yeah, it's just an allegation, and and we don't even know. We it, it you know it hasn't kicked in fully. But labor policy's gotten complicated if it wasn't complicated already. Well, so the answer, of course, is to go back through the National Labor Relations Act, clean it up, and put workers back in control. Because isn't the whole point of the National Labor Relations Act for the workers? It's supposed to be for the workers, Mark. All this union yeah. stuff's all supposed to be for the workers. Somehow the workers get screwed in the process. Absolutely, and that you're exactly right. You know, the, the flowery language of the of the the National Labor Relations Act, Chapter 7 of the Act says that workers shall have the right to choose to organize and mobilize and collectively bargain for mutual aid and support. And it says you also shall have the right to refrain. And, you know, that right to refrain was, was predicated on a, on a clause, a comma that went farther, said, except to the extent you may be compelled to be a member of a union as a condition of employment. So, you know, what was allegedly written in flowery terms for employees has turned out to be a tool for big labor and big business. And the, the one person left out of the equation is our employees. Always. And that's why, you know, our work is, is so important and helping employees is our mission here. I, I knew after all of the Supreme Court cases, I knew that you would not run out of things to to have to, you know, <laughs> defend. Yeah. How do people go about, let's say, you know, your right to work. Um, there's all kinds of ways the union make you run, makes you run through hoops of fire and, you know, do somersaults and things like that in Wisconsin. Um, but if you're someone out there who wants to do it and you keep being told no, because sometimes that happens, how do they go about yeah. contacting you guys? What do you do for people um, if they reach out to you? 
Yeah, we can provide le- free legal aid, as you mentioned already, and we, we can walk them through the process of exercising their rights if they're in a forced unionism state and forced to pay dues. We can help them exercise their rights under a Supreme Court case called Beck versus Communication Workers of America that we argued at the Supreme Court and won that allows them to get out of the political component, the forced political component of union dues. If they're in a right-to-work state, we can help them exercise their, their, their right-to-work protections. If they want to decertify, uh, they can come to our website, nrtw.org, or they can call us on a toll-free number, 1-800-336-3600, talk to an attorney about what their rights are in the workplace, and we can help them do whatever they want to do, that what they want to try to do. We can help them along that path and, and be there to defend them and protect them against you know union officials and the, and the intrusion on their rights, whether it be under the National Labor Relations Act or, frankly, under Act 10. We can help anyone in that regard. So we're willing to do that and want to do that. All right, and it's free, people, so don't be afraid to call. Um, you're a nonprofit organization, so um, you know understand that you know you're, it's not a scam. It's not like, you know, well, it's free for the call, <laughs> but then i got to pay $2,000. No, it's free because you you're, this is what yeah. you do, um, your public interest law firm uh, and a public interest organization. And I really appreciate all the work you've done. Thank you for helping us here. Thank you for being, being willing to help and ready to help on Act 10 again. I bet we're going to yeah. have to fight for right to work. Um, somehow, it just seems like, Mark, you're going to probably, you're going to have to find your cheese head. And you're going to have to find your Packers well, jersey. And you're going to have to, you know, just plan to spend a little bit of time in our state. If you promise brownies, I'll come. I read your recipe on brownies. That's uh, that's pretty indulgent. Crack brownies. Yes. Crack brownies, yeah. Cra- I yeah. will make wow. you... If you come to Wisconsin, I will make you crack brownies. I won't put the crack in them, okay? Okay, It's good, illegal, good, 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 yeah. but I will make you the crack brownies, and um, and I will watch as you eat them, because the last time I ate crack brownies, I think I gained four pounds, but Mark... Oh, my God. By the way, where is my crack brownies recipe? Is it still on the website? It still is. Yeah, that's you can, where I found it. All right, you can still go to the Vicki McKenna blog, and you can scroll down and find the crack brownies recipe. Thanks for reminding me of that. That makes me, it kind of makes me feel happy inside. Thanks, Mark, for coming on the program today. All right, Vicki, thank you. Always awesome to have you on the show. So at the very least, legally speaking, we are in good hands when it comes to the attorneys and the organizations. National Right to Work, Legal Defense Foundation, National Right to Work Foundation, uh, or rather, committee. And then we've also got, of course, Wisconsin Institute for Law and Liberty, and they're awesome, too. We will take a break on the Vicki McKenna Show. Thanks very much.